This is a continuation of the series of lectures on Christian doctrine by Dr. Joe Sprinkle. The current topic is the nature of sin. The concept of sin is an unpleasant one even among Christians, but the word sin is nearly non-existent outside of Christian circles. As theologian uh, Jack uh, uh, Cottrell puts it, the fact is that philosophies and religions outside of the sphere of God's revelation have never had a true concept of sin in the first place. Almost every non-biblical worldview diagnoses man's basic problem as either ignorance, uh, such as Hinduism and Buddhism and Gnosticism, or as weakness, for example, existentialism, or a combination of the two. Uh, which is what Christian liberalism or secular Christianity would tend to say, but not as sin. Some materialists even deny that there's such a thing as good and evil, much less sin. One can only talk about what is and not what ought, because ought implies some sort of moral law, even a moral lawgiver. And so without God, one can determine morality, uh, well, based on majority vote, but majorities change over time, or based on what some or another elite says is right, or individual preferences, but in any case there are no moral absolutes. Freudianism has influenced society to think that guilt is an irrational feeling that one should not have. But the Bible affirms an objective morality based on God's moral law with real moral guilt for those who violate that law. So let's explore the Bible's teaching about sin. And our preliminary observation is uh, to distinguish between the word sin singular and the word sins plural. Uh, the word sin is often used in the sense of the condition of sinfulness or the sin nature. And so uh, when one is guilty of sin, or if we claim to be without sin, uh, if, uh, John 8, 41 and 1 John, 8, uh, uh, 1 John 1 and verse 8, uh, is speaking of the condition of sinfulness. But when the plural is used, it's uh, referring to individual acts of sin. Now, the word in the singular can just be a act of sin, but you can also refer to the condition of sinfulness. Sin usually implies an offense against God. And this is why secular people tend uh, rarely to use the word. Uh, in the Bible, it's also used of offenses against other people, uh, but predominantly it's offenses against God and his law. Sin, we can affirm, engenders spiritual disability. Sin ensnares. Sin disables and plunges us into spiritual darkness. Uh, Romans chapter 1 and verse 21 and verse 28 say this, For although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God or gave thanks to him, but their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. Just as they did not think it worthwhile to retain knowledge of God, so God gave them over to a depraved mind so that they do what they ought, what ought not to be done. Again, as sin takes over, spiritual disability takes over, and more sinning will occur. Another preliminary observation is that there are sins of omission, sins of wrong motive, and sins of wrong thought, as well as sins of commission. For example, James 4.17 says, If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. That would be a sin of omission. 
in Matthew 6, uh, verse 2, 5, and 16, it says uh, that doing the right thing for the wrong reason, uh, such as uh, giving alms to the poor, or fasting, or praying so that you can be seen, is sinful. So even doing the right thing for the wrong reason can be a sin. And sin can involve inner thoughts not acted upon in the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not covet your, anything that belongs to your neighbor, that coveting or uh, envy, in this case, uh, doesn't involve any action, it just involves the thought life. Or when Jesus says, if you looked after a woman to commit adultery with her, uh, well, that's committing adultery in your heart. It's a sin to even think the sinful action, uh, even if you don't commit the sinful deed. Well, how many sins are there? And there are very many. The Ten Commandments will talk about idolatry, false worship, misusing God's name, violating the Sabbath, dishonoring parents, murder, adultery, stealing, libel or lies, envy or greed. Uh, and there's a list in Galatians uh, chapter 5 verses uh, uh, 19 and 20. That verse says that the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions. And so, again, uh, that's a list of a, a number of other things that are listed by the Bible as sinful. Sometimes the Bible speaks of the flesh. Uh, if you have a more literal translation, uh, it'll read something like in Galatians uh, 5, 19 through 20, the acts of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery. Uh, and flesh there refers to the sinful nature. That is the uh, part of mankind that causes us to desire to do immoral and impure and uh, idolatrous and uh, so forth uh, types of things. It's uh, not referring uh, to the literal flesh and blood that we have, although that's a weakness that contributes to the problem, uh, but it's uh, especially referring to uh, the sinful nature. Well, what is sin? Well, Grudem defines sin in his systematic theology. Sin is any failure to conform to the moral law of God and act, attitude, or nature. And First John uh, chapter 3 and verse 4 would seem to go along with that. Everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. God's moral law is found in the teaching of Scripture about morality throughout the Bible, though one concise form of the moral law is found in the Ten Commandments. Other verses that support the idea of sin as breaking of God's moral law. Uh, 1 Samuel uh, 13, 13, you have done a foolish thing, Samuel said, uh, talking to Saul. You have not kept the command of the Lord your God that the Lord your God gave you. And in 1 Chronicles 10, 13, Saul died because he was unfaithful to the Lord. He did not keep the word of the Lord and even consulted a medium for guidance. Or Nehemiah 9 and verse 29, you warned them in order to turn them back to your law, but they became arrogant and disobeyed your commands. They sinned against your ordinances, of which you said, the person who obeys them will live by them. Stubbornly they turned their backs on you, became stiff-necked, and refused to listen. Uh, Romans 2.23, you who boast in the law, do you honor God by breaking the law? Sin is a breaking of the moral law of God.
But another definition of sin, which uh, complements the first one, sin is wrongdoing or unrighteousness. Unrighteousness is the opposite of doing what is right. And again, uh, 1 John 5.17, all wrongdoing is sin. Sin is also acting contrary to faith or conscience. In uh, Romans uh, 14, verse 23, everything that does not come from faith is sin. Sin is a missing of the mark. Missing the mark are varying from the path of God's standard. And this is true both of the Hebrew word uh, for sin, chata, and the Greek word, uh, 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 harmartano. Both of them mean to miss the mark. You have this in Judges 20 and verse 16, where uh, there were uh, skilled archers who did not easily uh, you know, miss the mark, miss the target but it's also used of veering from God's path. So sin misses the mark of God's standard. Sin can also be defined as rebellion. Another word for sin is the Hebrew word pasha and the Greek word uh, antis uh, antistaso. Uh, both of them have to do with rebelling, rebelling against authority. In this case, sin is specifically rebelling against the authority of God. Uh, Isaiah chapter 1, and there God complains, Children I have reared, speaking of Israel, and brought up, but they have rebelled against me. Sin is rebellion against God. Rebelling against the human authorities that God has established is also, in effect, a rebellion against God. Uh, Romans uh, chapter 13 and verse 2. Wherefore, whoever resists the authorities resists God, uh, what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. So even repelling against uh, the authority of the state, the state having been established by God, in effect rebels against God. Lucifer's describes, uh, excuse me, uh, Milton describes Luth Lucifer's rebellion in his famous poem, Paradise Lost. He describes Satan uh, contemplating his soon being cast into hell and yet uttering in defiance better to reign in hell than to serve in heaven and this illustrates the kind of rebellions that human beings also uh, exhibit in rebelling against god and his authority another definition of sin is wandering away from god Sin is compared to being like a lost sheep wandering away from God our shepherd. Isaiah 53 and verse 6, All we like sheep have gone astray, each of us has turned to our, his own way. Thus one can inadvertently sin just by inattention, just by wandering away from God. Yet another definition of sin is selfishness. The theologian Augustus Strong made that his main definition of sin. And there's verses that would go along with that. Uh, an unfriendly person pursues selfish ends, Proverbs 18.1. But those who are self-seeking and who reject the truth and follow evil, there will be wrath and anger, uh, Romans 2 and verse 8. Again, self-seeking is uh in essence sin all of us uh, also have lived among them at one time gratifying the cravings of our flesh again the cravings of our sinful nature ephesians 2 and verse 3 uh, again uh, selfishness uh, for where you have envy and selfish ambition there you will find disorder in every evil practice james 3 16 again selfishness 
uh, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain deceit, uh, Philippians 2 and verse 3.